Do you want this? Today's tutorial is about loop movement or many people commonly call it dash. It helps you to slide to your wishing place. Requirements. You must understand the tutorials about channel ability, variables and leaks. And at least can do some of my other tutorials to be familiar with trigger, as this video used a lot of them. And in Warcraft there is no ability like this. Loop movement. You need two and only two triggers. Let's create a folder to categorize your trigger. The folder itself does nothing, but keep your editor tidy when you started to have 100 triggers. The first trigger of the two will tell when I will slide dash to where. So it set the direction and the condition to dash. I believe you can make a simple trigger to move a unit instantly to somewhere. If you never use point, point is just a location on the map like position a unit is standing, position of a tree. It's exactly like a point in math. So point with offset is still a point, but it is a point gets moved towards a nearby location. First you need to understand about angle. Angle in Warcraft 3 is a real number from 0 to 360 as you can see in the picture. It increases counterclockwise. So 0 degree is east, 90 degrees is north, 225 is southwest direction as it is in the middle of south and west. Now you understand about angle. Let's move to offset definition. Let's take this point as an example. Every point that is 50 unit away is that point will be called point with offset by 50 per. In math, they perfectly make a circle. So you have many points to choose from with an offset only. With a given degree, you can specify the position of new point. Here, if I have offset by 50 and degree zero, it will pick only one point. Here I have offset by 100 and degree 45, I will designate a point further away toward northeast position. To dash forward, we set the new point a few unit away towards facing angle. As you can see Hero Blink really moved forward in her direction. It only moved once. How about we trigger to move twice? Here at 5 second I will move once. And at 7 second I will move a second time. We create a dummy ability that targets point as our destination. Let's name it Force Staff in honor of Dota Force Staff item. Now add it to our hero. Now we make a trigger to tell that when we cast the dummy Force Staff ability, we will start to move from A to B, where A is the position of Blink as the departure point. At the moment you just need to care about two things, a name for that point variable and variable type, which is type point. I will go for the name point one. You can give any name. If you store a real number, you need real type. If you store an integer, you need integer type. So this case you need point type as you store a point. Now I store caster's position to variable point 1, and ask it to remember for me. Let's create another variable. I have the caster position, so I will store target point of ability being cast to variable point 2. So I will have a destination. So I have two points, which means I can set a duration in math. The first trigger only set the direction, 
you need another trigger to move in the set direction. Remember to turn off this move loop trigger first. I will explain why later. In the first trigger, you need an action to turn on the move loop trigger. The loop is initially off. When you cast the dummy ability, it will turn on. And you begin to move. Now in the second trigger let's create a third point. Point 3 will serve as Blink's current position, and it will move along as Blink moves. I'll explain in detail later. And add a fourth point, which is the point Blink will move to or Blink's next position. Now you may be confused as hell now, so I'll explain by giving a visual example. In the first trigger, you have point 1 is Blink's departing position and point 2 is the target point of ability being cast. It can be seen as a destination or just a point that Blink will move through. So, with two points you have a direction from point 1 towards point 2. Now we have point 3, which is Blink's current position. And as we move, the position Blink will move to is point 4. Now, what happens after the first time I move Blink? She will leave point 3 and goes to point 4. So her current position will be assigned as point 3, and her next position is a point in front of her, which is now the point 4. Now after one second, these two points will change, and if you can see, we gradually move Blink towards the destination which is point 2. So here we set point 4 is a point with offset from point 3, angle from point 1 towards point 2. Here I'll explain angle between points. Angle between points A and B is the angle of vector AB. Which means angle between AB is not equal to angle between B and A. And unlike facing angle, angle between points can have negative value. We had departure and destination, now just give action to move that unit. As you can see, Blink moves, even though a bit unnatural and slow. Now let's reduce the interval of each move to smooth the movement. 0.3 second is the fastest threshold for a trigger to run all actions. Whoa, we should slow down a bit. Reduce to 20, so each second she moves 20 multiply 33 equal to 660 unit. Now you can slide, but you need to make it stop. To stop, you must tell editor when it should turn off the move loop trigger. If you understand how to turn it on already, turn off a loop movement is easy. There are four common ways to turn off a loop movement. I'll go through each of them. The first method, use wait function. This wait means that it turns on move loop trigger then. Wait 2 seconds then turn off move loop trigger. Let's check. As you spend more time map making, you definitely not use wait. The reasons will be covered in another tutorial, but you can understand one problem that it is not accurate. A 2 second wait is actually a wait with 1.87 seconds or around. The second method. Use timers. Create a third trigger dedicated to tell the editor when to turn off the loop move trigger.
A timer is also a variable. It stores given time like point variable stores point. So I will store 1.5 seconds to this timer. And it works like an hourglass with time countdown to zero. If my 1.5 second hourglass runs out, the third trigger will do action. Turn off second trigger move loop. A 1.5 second timer will run exactly 1.5 seconds no more, no less. Although it requires three triggers, but it doesn't cause notable memory. Third method, use loop integer. You don't need any additional trigger for this method. You still need an integer variable as a parameter to check. Each time move loop trigger runs, you add one to the integer. So if the integer crosses a threshold, turn off the trigger. So a trigger runs every 0.350 times would result in 1.5 seconds. Remember to set loop integer to zero after turn off for the next use. The fourth method, check distance. What is the common in three previous method? Those check time to turn off, which means you always run about 1.5 second or given time. If you use this method, you will stop soon or later. Depending on your target point is close or far to you. I use real comparison to check distance between two points. If blink is close enough to the target point, this trigger will turn off as it matches the condition. You also need no any additional variables nor trigger. As you learned from leak tutorial, you must remove point leak after each loop. According to Hive Workshop, each point not removed leak point 361 kilobits in your RAM. If you don't remove point, a single cast of 1.5 second loop will leak 102 points, equal to 368 KB in your RAM. This does not include 10 or more of your future abilities that have this in a single match. you set a new point 3 and point 4. So remove only point 3 and point after move. You use point tone and point 2 for direction, so only remove them when loop ends. If you can follow until here, I bet this one will be easy for you. A constant move is boring. How about we gradually move faster? Loop with acceleration or gradually faster slower similar to this one. To achieve that, you just need one more real integer variable that adds acceleration.
Distance is a real number so 4 will be converted into 4 to be able to add. So you begin with speed 20 and with acceleration of 4 each loop speed to 24, 28, 36, 48, and so on. Remember to set velocity to 0 when loop ends for next use. You can similarly make a gradually slower loop by setting initial speed high in a negative velocity or reverse a sloop when speed reaches zero. Happy looping!